Okay, good morning, bom dia, in Portuguese. Um, in, the next few, uh, in the next minutes, I'm going to share with you uh, an experience that's taking place in Brazil since January that's not only inspired by GNH, but also based on GNH. But beforehand, I must tell you that we are not going to talk about um, happiness in the workplace because this is not our goal. We are going to talk about helping people flourish so that they can take to work their better or best selves and from that deliver a better experience for the patients and value to society. Uh, people say that you can know a little bit about a person um, from the, uh, who they quote and what they quote. So I'm going to quote, I'm going to mention uh, an Irish philosopher that has been very important for me and uh, shaping who I am in the 90s. Uh, this is Charles Handy, and he said in a very nice paper, in my worst moments I have thought organizations were places designed to be run by sadists and stuffed by masochists. It can be hard, but I, I can assure you I've been there. I've been there like 20 years ago, um, 17 years ago to be, to be precise, when I left the, the role of an executive and became a consultant, because I think I wasn't able to deal with with all the suffering that was going on in companies by that time. And we all know that companies are producing uh, a lot of suffering in the world. And uh, I would say that it's happening due to um, the death of an economical system. We are, from my point of view, dealing with the ghost of a system that doesn't work anymore. And it doesn't work anymore due to a paradox. I'm going to mention ju just three points. Um, first of all, companies say they want to be competitive, but uh, there is a, a huge difference from the narrative and the actions. So they say th they want to be competitive and they pressure people, they pressure the employees. And what they get is uh, stress, burnout, uh, absenteeism, and sick leaves. Also, they say they want to retain top talents, but they see employees only from uh, the professional um, dimension. And what they have, what they get, is massive turnover. I'm going to share an experience in, the, in a private hospital. And one of the main challenges in Brazil now in the healthcare industry is exactly the massive turnover. So they lose all the investment in recruitment, training, and also building up the culture. Uh, the other point when we talk about this paradox is the loyal customers. Every company wants loyal customers. But what they do is that they commodify everything, everything. Uh, and they get what? These engaged employees and disengaged um, customers as well. Um, another quote, this one is most recent for me. This man is helping shaping who I am right now. It's Otto Scharmer, uh, MIT professor and the founder of Presencing Institute. And he says, the crisis of our time isn't just a crisis of a single leader or a single organization, country or conflict. The crisis of our time reveals the dying of an old social structure and the way of thinking. As I mentioned, I just mentioned, um, from our point of view in the institute I, I work, the, the economical system that we are still working on is dead. We have no doubt about it. Um, we see GNH as a new paradigm, not a development paradigm, but an economical paradigm. We've been trying to talk about GNH, and I think this is our challenge from an economical point of view. And uh, we took it to Brazil, and we see that as an opportunity. Um, of course, we have a huge crisis, but each crisis is also a huge opportunity for taking humanity to another level. 
uh, we have the arise of visionary organizations. We have a shift of many companies trying to deliver not only good and services, but also value to society. And I heard the sentence in Totnes, that is a transition town in England, in Devon, the problem can be also a solution. And please look at the last sentence. It seems like a word, and it's intentional. You can read opportunity nowhere, or you can read opportunity now here. It's just a, a matter of perspective. Yeah. Um, this is the hospital. So I'll, I'm going to share some details about the, the, our experience. And I'll, I'll, I don't have time to refer to all details, but they are all in the, my, in the paper. So you can go to the paper and see the details, the technical details of the project. This is one of the hugest hospitals in Brazil. Uh, it's situated in Brasilia, the, our capital, in the middle of the country. Uh, they have uh, 1,225 employees and more than 750 uh, physicians working there. They started the program in January, this January, just uh, 11 months ago. And uh, one point that I'm going to share with you is that the first step was a survey based on GNH. And all the interventions we had there were on positive psychology, neuroscience, GNH, and theory U. And let's see a little bit. This is the system. This is a diagram that's being built. It's not ready, and I hope it won't ever be ready. It has to change as we, uh, we see the evolution of the project. Uh, we start measuring. So I think this is, was a very important step to see uh, the status of happiness in the company. Once again, not exactly in the company, but in employees' lives. Uh, the second moment was education. We need to educate people to be happy. Sometimes they don't know how to be happy. Actually, they don't know exactly what happiness is. Because uh, when we talk about capitalism, we are very attached to consumerism. So many times, happiness, they, they, it's not a choice. We didn't choose to see happiness as consumerism. But we were told we could be happy buying and consuming. And this is a huge lie. So we have a huge education program. And you, you can check the curriculum in the paper, as I won't have time to mention everything. And then we start transforming through a co comprehensive happiness program. I'll give you an example. This week, um, they were having there in the company uh, financial consult uh, consulting for all the employees that needed to deal with debt. So it's not that the company is going to pay for the debt, but they are going to teach how to deal with money. And if they find during the, if they found during the week someone that is really in huge trouble, then they would uh, give some support. Today, in a few hours, we are eight hours ahead, uh, behind. So in a few hours, they will be launching a community garden. So things are happening through all the year. So please also go to the paper to see more details about that. Oh, sorry. And also, we need to adjust all the time the program. It's not that it's happening like this. We, of course, the first step was measuring, but then we have almost everything going on together. We have the educational program, the actions being um, led by the company. We are adjusting all the time what we are seeing. And there is something you won't be able to read, but between every step, we have a moment to reflect and reconnect. Here, we are talking about um, presencing, mindfulness, and meditation. These are things that are very important because um, we do believe that all the interventions that we are doing and the managers and the director are doing there, they depend directly on the inner condition of the interventors. So that's very important in a program like that. It's not external dimensions of happiness, but in the internal, the inner dimensions of happiness as well. I'm going to share you the spider diagram that is the result of our GNH survey. And this diagram is 
on the table of every director in the company so that they remember the, uh, the real situation there before they take any kind of decision. We had some um, vulnerable dimensions and these were the ones that we choose to work on this year. We will go on and we will have another survey one year when we complete the first year, that will be on February. The weakest uh, dimensions were health, especially uh, due to overweight, sedentarism, and um, sleeping problems. We are talking about hospitals, so you have the night shifts and so on. Um, other points that were very important were time use, and I would say cultural diversity, good governance and living standard. This is a picture of Brazil. This is like um, a sample of what our population is um, facing right now. As a result of all the actions, we already, um, We've, we've seen already some results that are very robust and we were not expecting. We didn't expect any really um, strong result before one year. And I've been a consultant for 20 years and I have never ever seen results so quickly as we've seen with g &H. Uh, I'm going to show you, but please understand that this is a company that is a benchmark in quality control. They have a statistic department, they have um, improvement department, so the numbers there are very precise and very con controlled. Uh, the first thing we s we've seen after six months were an increasing in internal customer satisfaction. Uh, it's a little one, but the point about all the, 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 the numbers I'm going to show you is that they, they achieved goals that they had uh, defined a long time ago and they were not able to achieve. So we overcome 90, 80% of satisfaction in, uh, of internal satisfaction um, index. Uh, the external customer satisfaction also achieved the goal that was 95%, so it's, it's also another result that we had. The third one is a very expressive one. Uh, Net Promoter Score is a, an international, international indicator that has to do with uh, customer loyalty. It's been used by companies like Apple, and uh, for you to have a... Um, for you to understand, this, this uh, net promoter score is about the emergency unity, and uh, what's acceptable is 21. The best hospitals in Brazil, they achieve 23. So after uh, six months of the project, we, we started in 21 and we achieved 25. So it's, must, it's really above the average in Brazil. And the fourth and very important uh, indicator I'm going to share you, with you today is the profitability. Um, they increased profitability in 2012 plus uh, 12 and a half percent in the first semester. This is very important, and I'm, it, it's not me who decided to, to bring these numbers. It was the company, because they understood that there was no systemic change during the six months that would explain this increasing in numbers. And they, uh, at that moment, they reached the goal of 18 percent of profitability. That is very good for the healthcare industry, we would say that we are achieving right now an average of 12% in Brazil when the company is performing well. And as a result, they shared with the employees this, these numbers, they shared and they paid one extra month's salary in September for the first time. This was very important from my, from my point of view because I was um, really concerned uh, how they would um, behavior in face of uh, seeing these kind of results. And so, and they already said that they will pay another extra salary if we keep achieving these numbers with the project. Key factors to success, from my point of view, were 
<clears throat> the first one was the CEO commitment. Uh, she could be here saying these words I'm saying. She, is really, she re had really embodied all the project and uh, the GNH philosophy. She's been invited already to, to speak about it in the country, and so she could be really in my place. Um, another point that I'd like to share with you is that instead of having a, a chief, chief hap happiness officer that could be away, they decided to have a happiness committee formed by few uh, directors. So I think it was very important in the first year as we are building up a new culture. So they were really involved with uh, all the projects and they were deciding everything together. Uh, beginning with the survey was also uh, a key factor for success so that we can measure the results. We, can, we will be able to measure the results and also it was very clear to decide um, which dimensions we should emphasize in the first year of the program. And also the Theory U framework has been helping us a lot to um, build a way of constructing, of seeing the future, the emergent future from another point of view as we need to work a lot with presencing meditation and mindfulness. We don't want to build the future based on our um, past experiences. This, this has been very important. I, I'd like also to um, speak about some concerns I have. The first one is about the purpose. I think we, if we want really to work with g &H, especially in the Western countries, we need to ask ourselves every day why we are doing that. I keep asking myself. Uh, it's very good to have the g &H of business, but I'm highly concerned of having the business of g &H because the moment we do that, we are going to repeat the past. And if we do that, we will try to move ahead with things that are not working anymore and are producing a lot of suffering in the world. Um, the other thing I'd like to share with you is that uh, we, we could not be naive to believe that we can convince uh, profity people that are just looking for profit to invest in happiness. My, my idea, what I would say to you, is that look for visionary leaders. They are everywhere. You just need to find them. And start with visionary leaders. That is much easier. And also, uh, remember that simple is also good. Simple is also beautiful. Um, before we start mixing our uh, Western experiences or other in indexes, we need really to understand g &H. Two This minutes, was our... Carla. Two minutes? Okay. This was our choice. We will uh, dive into g &H, then we start mixing things. Before you understand it very well, I, I would recommend do not mix with other indexes. Um, these are my comments. I'm going to share with you some, some images of our work. The, the CEO is the one up there embracing me, uh, Dr. Lorena. So I'd like to thank her for the opportunity for being a visionary leader that embraced this um, new framework. And also, I'd like to quote, this, is, this, is what, this wasn't, um, in the script, but I'd like to quote Dalai Lama, saying that if you want to be happy, practice compassion. And if you want people to be happy, also practice compassion. And I'm, I'm quoting this because uh, since I stepped in Bhutan, it's my first time here, I've been breathing compassion. So that's my message. Thank you very much.